You're listening to Just My Show, your number one source for pop culture. So you first uh, appeared in the second season, although the first season was short, so it was pretty early on in the run that, that you were in there. What, uh, you know, Seinfeld certainly hadn't caught on at that point, but you'd done tons of guest spots on other shows, you know, Get Smart, The Monkees, All in the Family. Did you have any idea back then that it turned into, you know, the biggest show in the history of TV? Oh, God, no, they didn't know either, you know. They had no idea for several years. As a matter of fact, uh, at the uh, 100th episode party, which they had, you know, to celebrate going on for 100 episodes, uh, the big wheels from NBC came down and they read this letter uh, at the party saying, this is after the second year, I guess, maybe even the first year, we didn't know what the hell this. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but we didn't know what this show is about. But it, it's not going to work. It's just, uh, it's nothing. It, the, the damn show doesn't mean anything. It's about these, I don't know if they said this, Jewish neurotics from New York, and they went on about how bad the show was. That's my point. Uh, and of course, everybody was laughing by then because it was the biggest hit, you know, in television at that time. So no, nobody knew that they had this good a show. As a matter of fact. As I remember, the, uh, their numbers, you know, so to speak, uh, Arbitron numbers and things, weren't that good until they switched from, I think, when, Tuesday or Wednesday night when they were on originally to Thursday night. And when they did that, they took off. That's when they became a big hit. So as a recurring character, I think you were in 15 episodes, although it probably feels like more to people. How well 15, did you? Fifteen, yes. Yeah. It could have been in more, but I, you know, when you do a recurring, you don't sign a contract, so you can do other shows. You see. Right. So I was out of town a number of times when they called me doing shows in Connecticut and wherever I was, you know, Denver, and I couldn't get there to do the show. As a matter of fact, one of the writers on the show uh, 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 spoke to me when I brought my Toyota in in North Hollywood here, near where I live. And he said, he knew me, and he said, Len, I didn't know who the hell he was, because sometimes you don't even see these guys They're backstage somewhere, you know. He said, Len, you know, I had written this show for, for, for you, totally, for Uncle Leo. It was all about you and Jeffrey. I said, really, what happened? He said, well, you're out of town, you couldn't do it. So, <laughs> that took care of that, yeah. There are so many great Uncle Leo moments, uh, the bookstore, the pledge drive. There's too many to name. Do you have a favorite scene or an episode that you were in? Gee, I don't know. I, I, I like the, I like them. I like most of them, as a matter of fact. The one I get uh, uh, spoken to mostly about is uh, uh, the watch episode, where I uh, uh, I pick up the watch that Jerry thrown into the trash basket on the New York street, you know, and I hold it and then I sell it back to him in the next episode for like three hundred bucks. So the one thing that people remember the most is the watch. And they say, where's the watch? Is that the watch? Is that the watch you're wearing? And as a matter of fact, I was uh, in Israel. Uh, I had never been there before or since, as a matter of fact. About, oh, 12 years ago, I guess, when Seinfeld was pretty hot. And uh, I was at the Whirling Wool. Uh, and I was fascinated by everything that was going on. And all of a sudden... I hear, Uncle Leo, where's the watch? <laughs> Which kind of broke me up. I mean, it's a whirling wall, you know, of all places. So. For more, go to www.justmyshow.com.